Dad and saw him as he helps carry the casket of his girlfriend, Catherine White. Remember, he called her a delicate Irish flower, and it was clear at her funeral that she had touched a lot of lives. Our senior news editor, Jennifer Paros, has the details from this emotional weekend as Jim said his final goodbye. Jim Carrey looked heartbroken, visibly shaken, as he helped carry his girlfriend's coffin after her funeral mass. When eyewitness tells E.T. that about 200 people gathered for the ceremony, the entire service was aired through speakers outside of the church. Catriona was remembered as someone who was not afraid to chase her dreams. You know, her sister Sarah, she had such an amazing capacity to love and to be loved. Local school children formed an honor guard as the actor made the half-mile journey from church to cemetery. Sources say that Jim did not attend Catriona's wake, which was on Friday night. We're not exactly sure why that was, uh, but it most likely had to do with the fact that Jim just didn't want to take any attention away from the people and why they were really there, which was to pay their respects to the White family. Jim flew to Ireland by private jet for the service, which was held in the small Irish village of Capelwhite. Jim's 28-year-old daughter, Jane, also attended the funeral. That's the father and daughter grieving with Catriona's sister, Lisa. Official cause of Kat's death hasn't been released yet. We have to wait about six to eight weeks for the toxicology report to come out. On the same day her body was laid to rest, Carrie tweeted this touching image of the couple together in silhouette with the caption, love cannot be lost. Kat was also remembered as a daddy's girl. She was actually found dead after an apparent suicide in her L.A. home only two days after the third anniversary of her dad's death. She was laid to rest next to her father, and a lot of mourners did take comfort in that, saying they're together again and she's finally at peace. Well, Jim is still in Ireland, and we are told he will return back to the States later this week. Meanwhile, Charlie Sheen is making headlines again for all the wrong reasons. We have the exclusive surveillance video of Charlie getting tossed out of a bar this weekend. The exclusive surveillance video. Charlie, reportedly intoxicated, gets upset when a fan started filming him with a cell phone in an Orange County bar Saturday night. Sheen allegedly knocked the phone out of the person's hand, and then the bar security stepped in. Security guard just came, separated some, uh, some parties that seemed like they might have been having a little bit of an argument, and separated them and left. Surveillance tape shows the bouncers removed Charlie in a headlock, which you can see here. Another celeb in trouble, Shia LaBeouf, arrested in Austin, Texas. Police allege Shia was drunk when he was stopped for jaywalking Friday night. The 29-year-old actor became agitated and non-cooperative when police detained him. According to a report, Shia and two female friends were trying to walk into a bar in Austin when a bouncer turned them away, claiming the actor was too drunk. Shia reportedly became verbally abusive before storming off which is when the jaywalking incident occurred. A police affidavit says Shia was a danger to himself and others. He was cited with public intoxication, a misdemeanor which carries a small fine. Sunday, Shia released a cryptic Twitter statement. I talk, just not to you. Now, here's the crazy thing. After his incident last year, Nancy, he struck a plea deal that required him to steer clear of the law for six months. That period ended just one month ago. So wow. if this had happened last month, Shy's in big trouble. Well, let's just hope nothing happens again in the future. Yeah. Let's good lighten point. things up a little bit. Nichelle Turner is here now with some shocking news about American Idol's final season and a very famous possible contestant. Look, this is great stuff, guys. You know the Idol producers want to find the best talent for their final season swan song. But JLo and the gang never expected Yeezy, yes. Kanye West himself to show up and compete for a ticket to Hollywood. I ain't saying she a gold digger. We gave him a ticket. He can come to Hollywood if he wants. <laughs> you can come, Kanye. It's okay. I don't know if you could ever got there on your own, but you can get there now. To Hollywood. Kim and Kanye were in town. Uh, they were doing something, I think, with the president. And Kanye decided to come over and literally walk through the same chamber door that all the contestants walked through. The judges didn't know he was going to come. He put on a number and he performed uh, a song that had J-Lo in the lyric. <laughs> so if there was any doubt that Ryan Seacrest put Kanye up to that impromptu idol audition, doubt no more. Listen to what Kanye says. I said we good that. Congratulations. He did quite well. Kim was a little nervous outside the door as she was waiting to see how he would do. I actually wasn't sure that they were coming either, but when they walked through, it was quite a moment. I was looking off to the side, looking at my phone or something, and I saw a guy that looked a lot like Kanye West come in. 
I said, so, you know, tell us your name, where you're from. And he went right with it, which is great. No advice. Just put him right through. Next, here's a question. How does Amy Schumer celebrate her awesome issue tackling funny and Kardashian bashing SNL hosting gig? And is that a great message for little girls? A whole family of women who take the faces they were born with as like a light suggestion? Is that great? <laughs> Chloe, she, she lost half her body weight. Like, Chloe just, she left it. She lost a Kendall. Well, of course she'd party with BFF J-Law. Duh. 4.30 a.m. and there's Jen giving the perfect piggyback to their shared friend Aziz Ansari as they left the after the SNL after party party. Amy left at 5 and then Instagrammed this epic SNL pyramid to top the last shot she sent out. Yeah, Amy brings a whole new meaning to squad goals. And everyone's still talking about The Walking Dead Season 6 premiere. They are killing it. Literally, with that gruesome death and zombie invasion. This is bigger, bolder, braver, more brutal than any season we've ever attempted. We're, we're an out-and-out -out zombie show. We're not apologizing for it. We were with the stars looking very different from their zombie-killing characters. And check out Norman Reedus on the cover of Details. Whoa. It was like, I don't know, 95 degrees out. So what you don't know is I'm dripping wet underneath there. Nothing wrong with a little sweat. Still look good, my friend. Now, Walking Dead star Lauren Cohan must really love battling crazy stuff because I want to show you this. It's your first look at a new thriller called The Boy. Now, Lauren plays a nanny hired to watch over a doll. I kid you not, a doll. And things get really creepy. You wouldn't hurt me, would you, Bronx? It's not safe in this house. You don't understand what's happening. All right, look. <laughs> the boy hits theaters January 22nd. I just have to say, when I go to the interview and they tell me I'm babysitting yeah. a doll, I don't even get that far. That's yeah, you're out of it. I don't get there. Uh, By the way, as a father of two young boys, that movie scares me. That makes it sound like your boys are possessed. On some <laughs> levels, they are. Oh, stop it. <laughs> All right, well, here is some of the boys are going to want to see. Vin Diesel, he has a new movie opening next weekend in which he fights at witches. But right now, Vin is fighting back against the haters out there who have been trying to body shame him over a recent photo. It's sweet revenge for the physically fit action star who posted this six-pack pic on Instagram, rebuffing rumors he had a, quote, dad bod after being photographed last week looking a little bit different on his balcony in Miami. Do you think the paparazzi just goes too far in invading people's oh, privacy with long lenses? Yeah, it's, it's way too far. It's, it's really, it's criminal. <laughs> Well, now Ben is showing off his rock hard abs, writing, quote, body shaming is always wrong. Get up. Take that, haters. The 48 year old also showing off his moves in the new action fantasy film, The Last Witch Hunter. I mean, you have to be in such incredible shape to be able to even handle these stunts. I know it sounds cliche, but you get out of it what you put into it. I take a lot of pride in feeling comfortable enough with the choreography that I could forget about that and allow myself to just be the character. And it's got a perfect voice to it, yeah. so deep, very I commanding. Think, you know, I think I'm gonna post a picture of me with shirtless just to give those body shamers something to do. <laughs> Still ahead. <laughs> Still ahead. We are on three different sets. Big Bang, NCIS LA, and TV's new comedy slash musical Crazy Ex-Girlfriend were the stars once vengeful exes. I actually stalked a guy like full-on stalked. <gasps> like for real stalked. That's ahead. That is how millions of fans got hooked on Rachel Bloom watching her crazy music videos. It's a talent that she has turned into the new show, Crazy Ex-Girlfriend. I don't know what it says about our Ashley Cousteau, but they bonded instantly on the set. Dude, we should hang out. Actually, I'm moving. Moving. West Covina, California, 91791. West Covina. I just want to say thank you because I'm one of those people that makes up really ridiculous songs in my head all about my daily routine. Mm -hmm. So thank you for doing that. You're welcome. You're not oh. alone. You're not alone. Rachel Bloom is the successful Manhattan attorney who turns into the crazy ex-girlfriend when she follows a former fling across country to the suburbs of L.A. West Covina. West Covina. Broadway trained Donna Lynn Champlin is her new bestie and becomes her partner in crime. <laughs> How are the musical numbers going to work into the show? Somebody's having a scene, and then all of a sudden, in my mind, or whoever's mind, it turns into a musical number. Friendly friends, we have all the friends. Cool. 
what is the craziest thing that you've done for love? Because I think that that is obviously a huge part of the show. The craziest thing I've done for love is the ways I tricked myself into thinking I wasn't stalking someone. Like, I would go to a place just to run into them, and I have this in my diary. I'd be like, dear diary, today I went to that Starbucks just because, like, I wanted to go there, and I happened to run into blah, 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 blah. What's the craziest thing you've ever done for love? Oh, for real. That I can say. That you can say on camera. <laughs> I actually stalked a guy, like, full-on stalked. <gasps> like, for real stalked, yeah. Have you ever been a stalker? Yes, pizza. I stare longingly at it all the time, and I, it's just, I can't have it. Up next, <laughs> more TV. We're behind the scenes of tonight's new Big Bang and NCIS LA. See how Chris O'Donnell is making it a family affair. My youngest uh, got to be on the show. Plus, a dancing star injured the accident on tape, as Bindi tells us about dancing tonight without Derek. And she is a force with her fist, but MMA champ Ronda Rousey is also becoming a big screen star. We sit down to talk about her Roadhouse remake taking over Patrick Swayze's iconic role. I really don't think that any other man could ever be the Swayze. Stick around. That is dancing's Val Schmerkowski making a young fan's day. She wanted Val to take her to the prom. Now, he wasn't able to make it, but he gave her a very sweet little dance. It was amazing, and it all happened outside Val's rehearsal. But I know that you know what was going on inside Val's rehearsal. I do. I, uh, this is the week. They're all the partners are switching up with all the dancers. Makes for some very interesting pairs, and Val's partner is front runner Bindi Irwin. But no matter who Bindi is dancing with, her boyfriend is never far from her mind. Bendy's zen for me, so we go. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> exactly. They're doing the cha-cha tonight, and we're guessing Bindi will have her usual support system in the audience. Her mom and her brother. She's even had her boyfriend there, U.S. wakeboarder Chandler Powell. Bindi told us how they make their long-distance relationship work. I am one of those old-fashioned people, and I love to write. So I write a lot, yeah. Like, like hand with write, a pen? Like letters. Yeah, so I write lots and lots this of letters. This is Mother Teresa reincarnated. <laughs> she writes letters, saves the world. Bindi's keeping the Team Crikey name for tonight, but they'll be facing a tough critic. Val's brother, Max, is a guest judge. I could never be a judge because I would just be like, you all get tens and I'm going to hug you all. And so that would kind of fail. But he will be so brilliant because he will bring something new and different to the judging arena. Yeah. Now on to another dancing star. Unfortunately, there's bad news about the French train hero, Alex Scarlatos. He injured his nose today during rehearsals when he took an elbow to the face from Emma Slater, who's his partner this week. Oh, that sounds like it hurts. It does, but he's tough. Yes, he is. And if there is anybody who knows about delivering a blow to the face and who is tough, Kevin, it would be Ronda Rousey. Uh, no doubt. She is the baddest female fighter on the planet. And trust me, I've learned that the hard way, firsthand. Ronda is undefeated and the undisputed female champion of mixed martial arts. And now the champ is taking on Hollywood with her first leading role. I'm going to be schwitzing, <laughs> schwitzing through this dress in no time. Yep, what you see is what you get. A hilariously real personality mixed with superhuman knockout skills. Right hand to the temple. And she faced plants. And it looks like Ronda isn't pulling any punches when it comes to Hollywood. She made her screen debut in The Expendables 3, played herself in Entourage, and had a cameo in Furious 7. And now she'll star in the remake of Patrick Swayze's classic, Roadhouse. You're too stupid to have a good turn. I was um, pursuing Roadhouse for like two years, I think. I really don't think that any other man could ever be the Swayze. I think that um, it, it's it's a, a wise angle to take to kind of do a little gender flip of the role. First, she's got mile 22 with Mark Wahlberg. She's hoping it'll help her snag the role she really wants, Captain Marvel. I'm really looking forward to doing my, my first starring role opposite Mark Wahlberg. Hopefully by the time Captain Marvel comes around, um, I will have enough experience and skills in the field for them to really seriously consider me. Rhonda seems ready to jump from the ring to acting full-time. Hey, it's worked for The Rock, but she might have to wait until she retires. Her next fight is November 14th, and no doubt Beyonce will be cheering her on. She played her viral speech on self-worth at her concert last month. When I heard that Beyonce even knew that I existed. <laughs> Like, what? She even knows that I'm alive. And when Rhonda wins that fight, you better have her one demand ready. Hot wings. I had to have hot wings. And um, 
If I can't get them, it is an actual issue. Like, I've, I've cried before because the, the right hot wings weren't there after a fight. Get her her hot wings. Yeah, you better make sure she has them. I mean, that's real. That's uh, by the scary. way, her fight against Holly Holm on November 14th is expected to draw the biggest crowd in the sport's history. That's man or woman. That's a lot of people. Yeah. Well, nearly 10 million people will be tuning into NCIS LA tonight on CBS. Yeah. It's a big anniversary, their 150th episode. And Michelle talked to Chris O'Donnell about turning it into a family affair. It's a bomb. Chris and LL to the rescue, but the star of this scene, Chris's daughter, seven-year-old Maeve O'Donnell. She was a little nervous when she got there, but then she she arrived at my trailer and they put a big star with her name on board and um, and she warmed up when she got in the makeup trailer and they started to let her play with the makeup brushes and and, and do her hair. So she, she had one little line and she you know would rehearse it at home and, and knew her line and she did it. She's like okay. I'm like, all right, we're going to do it again. She goes, but I did it. Like, I did it good. Maeve and Chris's real-life wife, Caroline, play bit parts of bystanders at a bombing. Hey, hey. The, boy. the O'Donnells have five kids, and over the seasons, we've seen Lily, Charles, and Finley all have screen time. And Maeve, the youngest, is a pro all the way. You okay? So why is it important, though, that your kids kind of get a sense of what you do? I think it's, it's just great exposure to... Mm -hmm. uh, what else is out there in the world? I don't know that any of my kids will actually end up in this industry. And if they do, that's terrific. Nice that it's the show's anniversary and his kids are there. Well, also tonight on CBS, two of the guys on The Big Bang Theory have started a band. And maybe being a rocker will help Raj find a groupie. Everyone is sort of settled now, or getting settled, you know. And uh, and Raj is not, so I don't know. Maybe he'll be. Maybe he'll become like the playboy. We also want to tell you the good news for Blind Spot. Yeah. NBC has ordered nine more episodes, which means the show's first season will last the full 22 episodes. All right, let's move on. Our Entertainment Tonight birthdays. Which Hunger Games star appeared in a movie with Tom Hanks at just 11 years old? Was it Jennifer Lawrence, Josh Hutcherson, or Elizabeth Banks? The answer is coming up next. That's what you think? Yeah. Welcome back, everybody, to the show. And tonight's E.T. Birthdays, which Hunger Games star appeared in a movie with Tom Hanks at just 11 years old? I did a movie called uh, Polar Express with him, and it was a big movie. That is Josh Hutcherson, who turns 23 today. I know it was a big weekend for you, Nancy, because you were addressing an issue that is near and dear to your heart, and that is the fight against ALS. Yeah, my sweet mama passed away from ALS. So I was at Augie's Quest, uh, ALS.net, of which I'm the spokesperson for. Yeah, and you were one of the folks who was honored as a champion in the fight against ALS, which is awesome. And Augie, who is named for, does so much. Augie Nieto and Lynn Nieto. David Foster provided the musical God. entertainment. Jan Carl, our friend from E.T., you're always out there fighting that fight. I know it. Tomorrow on E.T., Sandra Bullock's boyfriend in his modeling heyday. We'll see you then. Bye, everybody. Silk shirts, leather pants, scarves, and sweaters sprawled on the cement giving his best blue steel. We have the exclusive Lost Photos tomorrow.